Welcome back to the show. With us now to talk sex and relationships is sexologist Dr. Limor Blockman. Hey, Limor. Um, hey, today Lee. we're going to talk about uh, the reason why some people cheat uh, and, and could it be interlaced in genetics. Absolutely. This is really, it's interesting and um, yeah, take it away. It is, it is, absolutely. And I was just talking to the lady at the uh, makeup room uh -huh. and she was, I can't believe it. I'm sending everybody to take a blood test now. <laughs> I guess that's an so, answer. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely interesting. Uh, so what they did is they took 181 uh, young adults and they tested their sexual history, but also took a DNA test from them mm. to see if there's anything that really implicates, you know, something that really indicates the, uh, the idea that there's something behind our cheating mind. Is there a cheating gene? There is. No. Yes. Really? Yes, there is. Okay. And the results are individuals with a variant of dopamine called D. RD4, mm -hmm. it's a specific gene uh, it, that is already correlated with bad behavior, with gambling, with taking risks, with cheating as well, among other things. So this was the result, you know, basically that there is a gene that you can seclude and actually find no way. that this specific gene, if the, the people that carry it have the tendency to to be um, to be cheaters, to to involve in, in infidelity yeah. and to favor but this kind of behavior. But if you're curious about a partner or someone that you're interested in and having a relationship with, and you obviously don't have a genetic lab in your house, right. um, so you then say look for these characteristics and behavior behaviors, uh, like you said, people who right. gamble and tend to have this sort right. of this personality. This need for risk, yeah. this need for uh, things to, to, to live on the edge, things like that. Now, it's not necessarily that these are the specifics mm -hmm. that will relate to this gene, but there is a gene, it's easy to check. The question is if, should we check should it? We? Yeah, among other things that they found, uh, the motivation of course stems from the system of, of uh, reward and pleasure, of course, as we know, and this is where the dopamine comes in. The data also suggests that it's reasonable for one of these people to love their partner immensely and still commit infidelity. Hmm. and go back to their partner and love them even more, but still it's something that is within them and I'm getting to, is it something that can be managed? And of course the drive for, uh, for dopamine rush is very different from the drive for commitment. Meaning, in other words, that I can be very committed and very interested and very interested in even in marrying my partner, but I'm very driven for this rush of dopamine because mm -hmm. I have this specific gene. Now, how likely would people be w with this gene to, to actually carry out cheating? How, how likely, how, how likely they are be? they to pursue yeah. cheating after that? So, you know, it varies because they didn't have real specific statistics in this specific uh, uh, research. But they find something very interesting, and I want to get to everything, of course, but the, the main thing is that uh, both men and women were plagued with it. So it wasn't mm. something that was only relevant for women, for men, for men of course. Right. But I want to say, if we are plagued with this, is this like a, a, just, just our destiny? We're going to definitely be cheaters? So I want to say the relationships are associative. It's not necessarily, not everybody that has this gene is going to be a cheater, right. and not everybody that is promiscuous has this gene. Mm -hmm. So it's both ends, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, correlated necessarily. I want to say that upbringing, experience, and culture has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. So we have to take into account, and I'm getting to something that is related to it, you have to take into account that the environment that we are brought up in, if we had a cheating father, a cheating mother, there's a likely chance that if we carry this gene, we're going to pursue it as well, or the other side of it. You know, it mm -hmm. really varies, it really depends. Just learning by seeing it. Right, well. right, absolutely. But I want to say, as I started and said, if the D4, uh, uh, DRD4 is something that is relevant for both, uh, for both genders, what are we doing with the assumption that men are uh, constantly uh, pursuing flings and women want long-term relationships? So as I always say, we take something that is not the Western society, but actually take it to a different remote society, and this is what the researchers did. They oh, took yeah? It, yeah, absolutely interesting to a uh, society that is kind of tribal. They're called the Makushi people, mm -hmm. and they're uh, in a place called uh, Guyana that is bordered with Brazil. Mm -hmm. And what they did, they spent a few years there actually evaluating this society and took a, 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 a sample of people between the ages of 18 and 45 and in the ratio, gender ratio of, uh, <laughs> we're getting <laughs> to yeah. the end of it, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, 
as as long as these men were uh, equal, equal in in number to women, they were pursuing romance and different infidelity. But as soon as women were in scarcity, these women were pursuing mm. only long-term relationships. So love and peace. Oh, this is interesting. All I can say. Yes, wow, absolutely. this was a really extensive study. Well, thanks so much uh, for coming in and telling us all about Thank it. Thank you, my dear.